So today what we're going to be doing is outlining a home automation system that passes the WAF test. A special thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a supporter of the channel you love. Thank you. So welcome to TechnoDad Life, and my name is Jeff. And so what we're going to be doing is researching home automation systems and designing one that meets the WIFE acceptance factor, or WAF as I call it. And so besides meeting the WAF, we also need to meet some requirements for ourselves. So what are those requirements? So for my wife, I asked her what she would want in a home automation system. And so the first thing she said was, why do we need one? But once we got past that, here's what she said. So it has to have a good sound system. It has to be easy to use. And I suggest voiced because it's not good adding extra buttons already all over the place like some systems do because that's just extra buttons. So it's not really automating anything. Uh, she also didn't want it to take up lots of room and it had to be pretty. Now I have different requirements and let's take a look at those. So if you have a self-hosted system, you have much better reaction times and lights turn on and off much faster. Uh, of course, I want to be able to control it from my phone from anywhere. I want it voice controlled. I'd like to do geofencing. I'd like to, to show my security cameras because not all do that. So we need that app on the phone or app on the TV that can do that. And then finally, I want it to be able to do routines or that's what it's called in some, but Basically, it's a if this, then that, so uh, IFTT. Uh, so if this, so basically we walk into the room, the lights turn on, the computer turns on, and I have a very large smile on my face because everything is happening automatically. So besides uh, self-hosting being faster, the other th nice things about it is no fees, and there's no phoning home, so people aren't keeping track of you. And it's more fun because you learn things. Now I say that, but if we activate sort of voice control, then uh, we'll be e either using a Google or an Amazon device to actually control things. So there still will be a little activity with the cloud, but it will be much less. The other thing that I wanted to do is interact with the devices I have right now. So basically, I don't want to be buying a whole lot of other devices besides my smart devices. So right now, we have an Amazon device, an Apple TV, a Fire Stick, a Roku. We have iPhones and iPads. The nice thing about iPhones and iPad, it has HomeKit, which has, or the Home app, which connects to HomeKit, which has a very nice, clean interface that you can use on your phone already. So now, given those choices being self-hosted, basically we have just five choices. So we have Home Assistant, Hubitat, uh, HomeKit, which we would use a HomeBridge, uh, HomeBridge software, or Hoobs. Hoobs is the uh, user-friendly version of HomeBridge. And so basically, HomeBridge and Home Assistant are very alike. Actually, all these are sort of alike in a lot of different ways. So once you learn one, you'll be able to figure out how to do the other ones. Uh, OpenHab, which is sort of the granddaddy of this, and uh, Domon Itz, which I don't know how to pronounce uh, correctly. So let's take a look at the five choices that I picked, and we'll go over the three that I decided to try out. First, we have OpenHab, which I believe is the oldest of this software, but seems to be slowing down in development. So we're going to skip this one right now, but maybe in the future, we'll try it out. Next is Domotais. Hopefully, I said that right. And so this one is a younger software. It has some great features, but there are definitely some areas that need further development. So we're going to pass on this one for right now. So next is HomeBridge, and HomeBridge brings all your devices to your Apple devices. It's a very well-developed app, so there's also an even friendlier UI to it, and it's called Hoobs, and so Hoobs. So Hoobs is supposed to be the user-friendly version of HomeBridge. You can see they sell their own devices, but you can also get a pre uh, 
installed image on an SD card or even download it yourself. Now the interesting thing is that not only does this work with Apple HomeKit, but it also works with Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. And so basically all these choices work with Google or Amazon. Next we have Hubitat. So Hubitat is different because it is both hardware and software. And so all the ones that we're looking at, you need something like a Raspberry Pi or a server where you can either install it or put it on Docker to use it. The radios are built into it, so you don't need to buy any extra hardware to get this to work, which just saves you an extra step and some extra money. Or it could cost you more money to do this. Depends on how you do things, of course. And then uh, finally is Home Assistant. And Home Assistant is probably the most popular home automation software right now. And it has many plugins, and, but you still need a Raspberry Pi and you still need to buy those radios on a stick. Now, having said that Home Assistant is the most popular, pretty much all these ones cover pretty much all devices. Some work better than others. And so what you should do on each of these websites, you should research the products that you have already or that you want to buy to make sure they integrate well. Now having said that, for all these, it, you can either write your own, if you know how to do that, uh, driver to get it to work, which uh, for most of them, if you know something about Docker, uh, then you can figure out how to do that. Or you can ask in their communities. And so most, uh, for all these, uh, the communities are very friendly. Uh, I found the Hubitat community super friendly. So definitely go ahead and ask questions on here. If you disagree with me or you have some other software you think is better, make sure you put it down in the comments below so I can take a look at that too. So we're not going to be looking at SmartThings, Wink, or others because those are not, because those are cloud-based. So basically they're much slower. So there's a delay because everything goes out to the cloud and comes back. And for some of these, you actually have to have a fee too that goes along with that. So during the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm going to be gathering the parts that I need to get started with this. I do have a few things already. And so what I'll do is I'll do update videos when I try out the different ones, say Hubitat, Home Assistant, uh, Homebridge, or Hoobs, depending on whichever one I try first. And I'll do a short video just explaining what I found and whether it's worth keeping or not. So which one do you think is best right now? And if you do use one, which hub do you use right now? I'm interested to see and learn from you guys what you find interesting. And then what we can do is do some more videos for the community about that. So that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Looking forward to producing some home uh, automation videos that have wife approval or at least wife acceptance. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.